Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. The name is Ninja Knight. Make sure you like the video, make sure you share the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell up above. Thank you. So here's an article from Variety and I've been put onto this article from Variety from Gary Beekler at Nerd Rotic. Now as you will see from the date on this is October 30th. It is now the 20th of November. Why have I sat on this information? I've sat on this information to see what else would happen within the Hollywood industry to see if this backed up and to see if there was any sort of other versions of this sort of same thing happening with any other movies. It's just happened with Wonder Woman. And in my opinion, this is the end of the theatre industry. This is the end of cinema as we know it. This is the end of the Hollywood blockbuster as Gary would say. And this ultimately is the crumbling of a massive institution that thought they were impenetrable they thought they were impervious they thought they were going to be immortal in that they could do what they did over the last number of years and certainly heightened so in the last couple of months and last number of weeks which is insult fans spit at fans basically and decided then to blame the fan on casting choices and certain individuals playing roles and certain different types of things being inserted into movies sjw woke weirdoness these hyenas have basically ended their own industry. It's hilarious to watch in a way. It is also sad that some of these characters have been destroyed along the way. And this is what they attempted to do with James Bond. They decided they wanted to cut the Lee Rowdies away from this man. The Cajonis as some people would say. And they wanted to go in a very different direction with Lashana Lynch from what we understand. They wanted her to take over the role of 007. They wanted her to be the future. Now depending on where you've heard the rumour. It seems like in these reshoots that they've been doing, it seems like they might have removed a significant part of that plot. It seems like they might have changed certain things about this movie. But ultimately, when they went around to different studios, they were laughed out the door. Now, what does that say about this movie? It says that this movie is in big trouble. One thing is for sure. The second thing is we know that the lead actor, Daniel Craig, doesn't really want to be there no more. We've heard the rumours about what's going on in the film. We've seen the trailers, it seems to back up those rumours in that James Bond's an absolute beta in this. We've heard that they wanted to go full on in on the Shad and Lynch. It looks like they won't have the possibility to do that. They wanted to alter Bond. And now they're saying that they're floating the idea of having Tom Hardy play Bond. Why is that a criticism? Well, you have Henry Cavill there who would be a perfect James Bond. He is a very masculine individual. He is an individual that does stand up for his beliefs and knows what fans want. Why have they gone with Hardy? Well, if you look at some of the interviews with Tom Hardy, particularly early in his career, there are a few interesting questions from journalists that talk about his orientation. So if you want to have a look at them, check it out. And I think that that's what they were trying to pl promote if they have Tom Hardy as Bond. So watch for that one if they do decide to end up casting him. So this article says in early October, with cases of beer bug rising in Europe, Metro Goldwyn Mayor decided to pull the plug on its plans to release No Time to Die or No Time to Cook, as some people call it, at Thanksgiving. The studio had made a similar decision last March as beer bug force gripped the world, pushing the release of the 25th James Bond adventure back by eight months, only to discover that it hadn't run far enough ahead of a worsening public health catastrophe. The movie was financially painful given that the studio had already spent $66 million in marketing costs. Bringing No Time to Die to the screen was already a pricey proposition. The film, which marks Daniel Craig's final return as 007, carried a $301 million budget. Wow. Plus, Craig and producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson, who control the rights to the series, have generous back-end and profit participation deals limiting the amount of money MGM is able to make on the movie. <laughs> I think you're going to see less of those deals going forward. MGM was in a buoyant and it was in a dilemma that could soon be shared by other smaller and mid-sized studios such as Lionsgate and STXE Ross as they try to wait out the beer bug issue. Delaying no time to die until April 2021 as MGM ultimately opted to do, meant that the studio had to reportedly carry an additional $1 million in interest charges per month. So chipping away at any sort of profit being made. And pe few people in the industry think that No Time To Die is done moving. Public health officials indicate that 
a vaccine is unlikely to be widely available by the spring and since the audience for the film skews older bond fans are more vulnerable to bear bug now that is absolute nonsense in itself that's pure and utter drivel if it's a good movie everyone's going to be interested in it it doesn't matter your age that's nonsense Prior to moving Now Time to Die, MGM chairman Kevin Ulrich went on a fishing expedition. So he went around to different studios and said, please, like, you know, like Oscar, please, please buy this movie. Like Oliver, please, please buy the movie. <laughs> Letting deep-pocketed streaming services know he might be open to licensing the movie to them exclusively for a year or even selling it outright. This is it, folks. It's done. Netflix and Apple engaged in some exploratory talks but never made a formal offer or even drafted the kind of financial analysis that usually accompanies such a sale. So they flirted with the idea and decided to say, nah, you're alright. That's damaged this severely. You, I hope you realise that this has severely and irreparably damaged Hollywood for good. This is it now. They, they can't go with this narrative anymore. It's done. That was partly because MGM and the parties remained very far apart. MGM was hoping for an offer of between 600 million to 850 million. Are they bananas? I don't think even if they released this movie in a good stage of the world, it would have made anywhere near 850 million. I would doubt that now very much in my opinion. Which might have been an impressive enough number to convince Broccoli and Wilson to forgo a theatrical release. Instead, the streamers indicated that they wouldn't top 400 million, which was more than MGM had already spent making the movie when Craig and the producers back ends were taken into account. Universal, which oversees foreign distribution, also needed to be compensated. A spokesperson for MGM said the studio would not comment on rumours, but all slated films were moved in an effort to preserve the theatrical experience. Numerous competitors pointed out that the MGM's bond predicament would have been less complex had the company chosen a major studio partner in 2017 as a distributor. MGM entered a joint venture with Annapurna Pictures, which was eventually branded United Artists releasing almost four years ago after turning down bids from major, in, from majors including Warner Brothers and Paramount Pictures. I'd say they're not happy with that one now. I'd say that that was an unwise decision. While other insiders insist the OAR has cash on hand to release both No Time to Die and sequel to MGM's Alicia Vikander-led Tomb Raider. Did anybody got to see that? Many agree that media giant would be better suited to weather this particular storm. An MGM spokesperson disputed an auction for bond rights and reaffirmed the studio's commitment to UAR saying we have tremendous confidence in the UAR team which is led by veterans of this industry who have worked on several bond films over the course of their careers. The failed deal for Bond took place at a time when streaming services have been aggressively snapping up major movies from traditional studios. Now that's a very important point. We've seen some absolute woeful material that's been snapped up by these studios and released on streaming. And they didn't want to stream James Bond. They didn't want to pay the money for James Bond. What does that tell you? Tells you the movie's probably not that good. So this has also hurt the movie as a whole. This basically having the hand slapped and told go away is that really having a big effect on this because if people see this and realize the ramifications that this is going to have certainly is going to be a big problem going forward and this is very relative to what's happening with wonder woman by the way wonder woman has now gone to stream as well as select theaters this is the end folks in recent months amazon has spent hundreds of millions to buy without remorse and coming to america from paramount Apple swept in and captured Greyhound from Sony and Netflix snapped up Trial of Chicago 7 from Paramount. It wasn't the first time that MGM had received incoming offers from streaming services on its films that had been forced to delay. The studio had numerous requests to offload Candyman to a Netflix, Amazon or Apple, but producer Jordan Peele insisted on a theatrical release for the horror remake. That's a situation that's going to come back to buy him, I think, now personally. This week, MGM opted to move another high-profile film, Respect, into 2021. The drama, which features Jennifer Hudson as Aretha Franklin, was seen as an award season contender. However, MGM felt that with the rising cases of beer bug around the globe, a release was improbable, if not dangerous. Its decision to push the movie led to speculation that the studio might be feeling financial pressures. That doesn't appear to be true yet. MGM had $790 million in cash and cash equivalents on its balance sheet as its most recent financial disclosure. 
it's unclear if the pandemic has forced it to eat into cash reserves i would say it has however a spokesperson for mgm said the studio has a liquidity profile north of 1 billion with 700 million in operating cash but mgm has other issues to contend with in the coming months epics the company's cable channel has proven to be a costly drain and could be unusually vulnerable to cord cutting the premium channel has yet to land a breakout hit the company has also been spending heavily on its film slate last winter mgm brought in oscar nominated producer michael de luca to oversee its motion picture group with a mandate of finding splashy projects he delivered lining up films from the likes of thomas kale george miller joe wright kenya barris ridley scott and Tom- paul thomas anderson the activity made a statement to the industry that mgm was getting ambitious However, DeLuca also wrote big checks to land the films. Anderson's untitled coming-of-age drama cost $40 million, which is roughly $10 million more than the other bidders were willing to spend on a project with limited commercial potential. Likewise, DeLuca was said to have far outspent other bidders to nab Scott's film, Gucci, and wrote a check for $3 million for the rights to Project Hail Mary, a sci-fi film set to star Ryan Gosling. Many of these films could ultimately pay off, but they were developed with an eye towards an extended theatrical release. Given the pandemic, it's unclear when the kind what when that kind of distribution strategy will even be viable again. This is it, folks. We have seen the end of the theatre industry, and this is not helping cinemas out because if this isn't going to the cinema and cinemas are not opened, it means then they cannot earn money, which therefore means that these movies are going to continue to lose money unless they lower their prices 400 million is top of the bank at the moment it seems and that is ultimately it this movie along with wonder woman and what wonder woman has just done and had to do certainly sends a message out to the rest of these movies and it seems like streaming is going to be the way forward it doesn't look like there's going to be a change anytime soon it's ironic and somewhat funny when you look at the way the james bond stuff has come out of the gate saying it's going to go SJW, it's going to go woke with Wonder Woman doing the exact same thing. And these companies now having to grovel to the people and ask them to spend money on this. I will no doubt see, I don't think we, I, I no doubt think we'll see No Time to Die at some stage on a streaming service. I think eventually MGM are going to have to buckle. They're going to have to accept some sort of offer before it gets to the, it's already in my opinion at, the point of no return in terms of they will not earn much of a profit on this movie and i think at this stage they probably will accept somewhat of a low ball offer to try and keep some cash flow going on so that they can move forward this is the hollywood industry this is the hollywood machine done and in a way i suppose you can say justice was done now i do feel sorry and i don't want to be laughing at people particularly the likes of hard-working crew members that to be on these sets i do not I am not laughing at people that work in theatre industries. I'm not laughing at people that work in cinemas. My deepest sympathies are with those people. These people that drive vans and stuff like that for these movies. That do all of the moving for example for these movies. And all of those other technical issues and problems. And certainly great work that the ordinary Joe does on these movies. Ultimately these movies have been hurt by the comments from their stars. They've been hurt by the comments from the directors. And these people are multimillionaires. Will they care? Probably not. But it's going to have an interesting ramification and effect for these people going forward. There are a number of actors already that I'm saying to myself would watch them and anything again with some of the things that they've come out with. And ultimately, they've only themselves to blame for that one. And it is an industry now that's going to have to change itself. It will change itself. It will have to. Otherwise, it faces extinction. And I think we've all learned in this time, as Nerd Rotic would say, adult pretenders actors they're not essential we can move on and we will move forward anyway i'm gonna leave the video there make sure you like the video make sure you share the video make sure you subscribe to the channel drop a comment below do you think that this is the end of the theater industry do you think this is the end of cinemas how does that make you feel i know myself looking at some of the cinema goers in the last couple of years there certainly seems to be a dwindling number of people actually going to cinemas is that something to do with the quality of movies coming out, the stars, the directors making comments like they have done? Maybe. Is it to do with the general public and their behaviour in public places that put people off going to the cinema? Very possibly, because some behaviour from general public members has been horrendous and not checked. So, 
that could be a factor what do you think with bonds basically devaluing the blockbuster and saying that they would accept basically an offer and were laughed out the door by at least two companies how do you think that that makes the industry look does that now make it look laughable does it make it look weak and does it certainly bring down the value of everything else if they were topping an offer of around 600 million would have been good enough for them and netflix said and amazon said about 400 was the best we can do interesting stuff to see going forward this is very symptomatic what's happening and it's only going to get worse if people think that this is going to blow over and the ratings are gone i don't think so drop a like on the video share the video subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell good luck